Since the Incarnation, and since the gift of the Spirit dwelling within us, the place of God's dwelling is the human person. We are the temple of God's indwelling. The difficulty in renovating or building a church is to keep the place of the indwelling God in the human person and the community gathered in prayer. We are the body of Christ filled with the Spirit gathered to celebrate liturgy. The floor plan of the parish church of St. Benedict is closest to the Lateran Cathedral of Rome. Our church has three naves. Our church is built in the shape of a cross. Our church has an extended apse. We could assign different usages to each of the axes of the cross in our parish church. The long axis could remain the place for the celebration of the sacraments, while the short cross axis could be dedicated to the reservation of the Blessed Sacrament as at the Lateran, the Cathedral of Rome. Like the Lateran, we could use the cross nave for the reservation of the Blessed Sacrament. Our cross nave already has a raised floor throughout the nave. First happened at St. Paul's. We could rearrange the extended apse to create a small chapel for the celebration of the Liturgy of the Hours. We have that extended apse, and it's not used. Well, they were doing um, adoration there, but I think that's moved now. All three of these major basilicas we have seen this evening have freestanding altars under a ciborium, and all three allow for seating all around the altar. You may need to increase we may need to increase the seating in our parish church of St. Benedict. We could do this by reconsidering how we arrange seating for the biggest events. Then we may need to scale the seating. Uh, when we may need seating on all sides of the altar, we could do it. Our new altar in the parish stands without a ciborium arching over it. We could restore the combination altar ciborium. Talk about all that tomorrow. We could restore the altar with its overarching ciborium. When our parish church of St. Benedict was built, it was built around and over the original chapel on that site. We could excavate the basement of the parish church and search for any remaining foundations of the original church, and then we could use these foundations to create a lower chapel like the Confessio of St. Peter's Basilica. Our parish church was not built on the grave of anyone, but the faith we have received has been handed on to us from our forebears in the monastic and parish communities. This is the origin of the word tradition, the handing on of faith from one generation to the next. Such a lower chapel, crypt chapel, would indicate the generativity of each generation practicing the faith and handing on what we have received. In these next two days, I'd like to return to the tradition uh, of the Church with you and from such a great treasury draw inspiration for our use today. That's it. Right on time. <laughs> Are there any further comments or consternations or... What is the difference between the two? Because doesn't St. Benedict have something similar to what you described as the Savorium? Yes. Oh, you used it well. Um, I'll explain it all tomorrow with photos. The Saborium is a lid and has a geometric uh, language. A baldachin is a tent, the tent of the meeting carried by the Israelites in the desert. And it has four columns. You know, when you process with the Blessed Sacrament, you have four columns. And, well, those Bernini colonnades, those are supposed to be tent poles. And you carry them. And then up above, there's flaps and tassels. 
It's a tent, so it's a baldachin as a tent. Mm -hmm. How does Mary Major fit into the scheme of the surprises? Um, well, first, the altar was in the nave. The apse was for the seating. Um, and then they ended up raising the platform. I do show a little bit of Mary Major in another slideshow, but I, I thought we, we had an hour. But uh, um, it, it really is a classic straight basilica. And they didn't put the transversal nave, although now there is a bit of something before the apse. They have two triumphal arches before the apse. And uh, uh, they have the confessio because uh, the relic of the manger is down there. And St. Mary Major is where the Pope goes for Christmas Day Mass. So it's, if you map the Holy Land over the city of Rome, you end up with Mary Major as Bethlehem, Sancta Croce in Jerusalem is uh, there, and then the, the cathedral. And uh, when I was in the parishes in Donovan County, I had three parishes, and the Emmaus window was in Wathena, so we did the, wash, the Holy Thursday and washing of the feet, Eucharistic things there. Um, Bendina, we had a lovely tradition for Good Friday that they really enjoyed, and so that was that was Good Friday place. And uh, Troy was, uh, in a sense, the Lateran. <laughs> That's where we had the baptisms for the Easter Vigil. So... When you have multiple parishes, it's nice to map either the city of Jerusalem or the city of Rome or or the liturgy and its celebrations over. Okay. What is your next presentation other than the land this weekend? Uh, just this weekend. Because uh, I'm going back to Rome at the end of September where I teach on the liturgy faculty but they have asked me to teach Latin. So we have an entire master's degree in architecture for liturgy. You can get a master's degree there in Italiano. And the pasta will never be overcooked. <laughs> it's true. <laughs>